you. And our next speaker is Dr. Andrea Rose, who is in the medical oncology at the Good Samaritan Hospital in Puyallup, and also at Fred Hutch, I believe. I'm going to talk about a plant-based diet and the impact of such a diet, primarily on prostate cancer. My training in nutrition involved one class in the first year of medical school. We learned about vitamins, the mechanism of action of a few vitamins and their deficiencies. Since then, I've had no training. So I was thinking if I was a fellow at the University of Washington in the middle of the 1990s, which is when I trained there, if I had proposed my project to be the, the effect of animal fat on cancer outcome, I would not have been supported. So I feel like we've come a long way. Every day, and patients ask me when they're diagnosed with cancer, what should I be eating? And to be honest, I say, well, we have a naturopath that comes to our, our clinic, and I would like very much for you to meet with the naturopath because I don't feel comfortable talking about diet really on an evidence-based basis. And so we have a fantastic naturopath in our clinic. We're very fortunate for that. But uh, the next question on their first visit is, what caused my cancer? And... Honestly, I always have been saying, I don't know what caused your cancer. It's probably something environmental, maybe something that you've been exposed to. But these are connected, it turns out. And so it's time for us to really, uh, to really answer the questions that they're asking us. And so I agree with Dr. Stewart that uh, just because we had one nutrition class doesn't give us the excuse to ignore the issue. This graph was... Uh, published in the Journal of National Cancer Institute in 1981, and I think we would all agree that diet has only gotten worse since that time, uh, 24 years ago, and it demonstrated that, or it suggested that 58% of cancer is caused by diet and 29% by tobacco. Paula Hamilton from uh, Oxford University said, we are one of the most polluted species on the planet. Indeed, if we are all so contaminated that if we were cannibals, our meat would be banned from human consumption. And at Roswell Park Cancer, Inst and Cancer Institute, they said people who, uh, this was a, a, a breakthrough, people who consume plenty of fruits and vegetables reduce their risk of prostate cancer by 50%. As an overall dietary pattern, the risk of prostate cancer is 54% less in vegetarians compared to non-vegetarians, which is clinically significant. So what's the issue? It's animal fat, especially fat from red meat, it's associated with elevated risk of advanced prostate cancer. This graph shows the relationship between animal fat on the bottom and um, age-adjusted prostate cancer per 100,000 per year, which clearly shows a relationship between animal fat and um, prostate cancer. On the very top right is the United States, and the very bottom left is Japan. And it's been shown that if someone moves from Japan to the United States, their risk of prostate cancer matches that of the United States. There's a study called the Melbourne Collaborative Trial, which looked prospectively at 14,000 men not diagnosed with prostate cancer and measured several variables, but identified a positive association between plasma saturated fat levels and prostate cancer risk. Another trial in Quebec looked at 384 men already diagnosed with prostate cancer and followed them for 5.2 years. And they controlled their uh, cases by grade, stage, treatment, and total energy consumption. Saturated fat was significantly associated with disease-specific survival. And the upper tercile of saturated fat consumption compared to the lower tercile uh, had three times the risk of dying from prostate cancer. What else besides animal fats? Persistent organic pollutants are man-made chemicals resistant to natural degradation. These are caused by industrialization and accumulate in water, bodies of water and soil and, soil, and contaminate the food chain. They're lipophilic, so they're found in uh, fat. Uh, and humans are ex exposed to these through fat in fish, dairy, and meat. And the highest concentration is seen in fatty fish. These are some of the chemicals. Dioxins are used in manufacturing process, herbicides and paper bleaching. Polychlorinated biphenyls are used in manufacturing electrical equipment and DDT and pesticides. And these have been 
uh, banned in the United States, yet their byproducts remain in the soil and the water decades later. This is the food chain. At the bottom, it's hard to read, but pesticides and herbicides are applied to grass, grain, and algae, and the animals consume these uh, contaminated products, and then the humans consume the animals with the contaminated products. And so at each step, the uh, toxic chemicals are much more concentrated. This graph shows pesticide residues in the United States diet, and the top line is uh, meat, fish, and poultry products. Industrial toxins found in food products. The middle bar going up the highest is freshwater fish, and the second to last one on the right is the vegan diet. And these uh, toxins were identified in these food products, not in people who consume them. Persistent organic pollutants cause or increased risk of prostate cancer. This is a study where they looked at um, con plasma concentration of these um, pollutants, two of them, that uh, when they were higher than the median of the uh, subjects, they had an increased risk of prostate cancer by three times. The other, th the other uh, another thing that's important to mention is heterocyclic amines. These are chemicals formed when muscle meat is cooked at high temperatures. Uh, there's been 24 studies that have implicated heterocyclic amines in multiple types of cancer. So foods on the grill. The top is chicken breast, skinless, boneless, grilled, and well done, has 14,000 nanograms per 100 grams of meat of heterocyclic amines, and corn and veggie burgers have zero. Hamburgers are 130. Serum cholesterol is also an independent risk factor for prostate cancer. Um, in animal models, higher circulating cholesterol levels have shown larger tumor size and increased intratumoral testosterone. They upregulate inflammatory pathways they increased intratumoral steroidogenesis, which is really important for the hormone-driven cancers, breast, prostate, and ovarian and endometrium. Low, LDL, low HDL is associated with a higher risk of prostate cancer, and high L HDL is protective. This shows the cholesterol levels according to diet, and the standard American diet has more cholesterol. Patients have more cholesterol than vegan diet. There's a clinical trial looking at reducing cholesterol in prostate cancer patients because there is an association between lower cholesterol and, and better outcome. So why not just give the patients statin drugs? So patients were randomized after their radical prostatectomy and followed for biochemical recurrence. And the statin drug was effective at reducing the risk of recurrence. But when the patients came off their statin drugs and normalized their cholesterol, there was a higher percentage of high-grade prostate cancer so it's very controversial to, to do this, and it's generally recommended that uh, the diet should be altered and not, not done so with medication. So it's not all bad news. There are some protective foods in terms of cancer prevention. Cruciferous vegetables include broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts, and they have isothiocyanate sulfur sulforaphane, which reduces the harm to the DNA done by the heterocyclic amines. Plant foods with salicylate reduce inflammation. Lycopene and tomato products are associated with better outcome in, t in prostate cancer patients. And the allium family of garlic, onion, and leeks have very beneficial um, effects. Soy, um, as mentioned earlier, as well as green tea, ginger, berries, and citrus fruits all have um, positive data in, in cancer prevention. Fiber may also protect against cancer. Um, in the initiation of cancer, fiber may reduce uh, carcinogen concentration, reduce the time for carcinogen interaction, prevent carcinogen activation, and prevent mutation. And in people who already have cancer, uh, fiber uh, scavenges the radical oxygen species, um, induces differentiation, apoptosis, modulates gene expression, enhances immunity, and prevents further mutations. So there's five ways that phytonutrients can prevent cancer. They de detoxify and deactivate carcinogens. They fuel cellular mechanisms to repair damaged DNA sequences. They impede proliferation of cells with DNA damage, protect DNA against further damage, 
and inhibit the spread of cancerous cells. This is a study of um, a plant-based diet that was given to prostate cancer patients who were diagnosed but declined standard treatment, and so they were followed and randomized to either a standard diet or a plant-based diet. And after one year, the patients on a plant-based diet had no patients with progression of disease, but six on the standard diet um, did have progression. The PSA rose in the, in the patients on a standard diet by 6%, but fell in the plant-based diet by 4%. They took the serum from the two groups and incubated it with the um, prostate cancer cell line in vitro. And the patient's serum from the patients on the plant-based diet inhibited 70% of the cell growth compared to 9% inhibition by the standard diet patient's plasma. In the same study, at three years, the, uh, d the uh, plant-based diet patients 5% had to start uh, standard treatment, whereas 37% of, of the control had to start treatment for their prostate cancer. The Geminal study is a, a study where low-risk prostate cancer patients that declined immediate standard treatment uh, were compared to themselves, and they had biopsies at baseline and at three months, and they underwent a very intense uh, diet and, new, and lifestyle intervention. The RNA, uh, they performed RT-PCR and found 48 transcripts were upregulated, and 453 were downregulated, and mo many of these uh, pathways involved uh, tumor genesis after just three months. So to summarize, plant-based diets reduce cancer risk by increasing fiber, phytonutrients, and plant oils, and decrease carcinogens, cholesterol, inflammagens, and saturated fat. The vegetarian prescription is safe and effective. There's no side effects, no contraindications, good patient compliance reduction of comorbidity risk, and is cost effective. A healthy diet not only can inhibit tumor genesis, but also can have a major impact on cancer progression and survival. Many chemicals found in edible plants are known to inhibit metastatic progression of cancer. Here's the information by Dr. Stewart regarding the vegetarians of Washington. Thank you.